So you're the famous Hector. You know what, brother? I'm the servant Hector Rios. That's what I do. I help out my community and I help out the people that I care about in the city of Los Angeles and anywhere that I go. Yeah, but uh, you were hired to do the uh, Tina Marie mural, uh, to redo it, and you did it. It was an amazing thing. I, I know God has something to do with this. Praise God, yeah. You know what, the gifts and the abilities that he grants us, and for the time that he does, we do the best that we can with those gifts. It's unbelievable. Can we see the Argonaut, the front, the front cover? Yeah, I just got this from, from a friend of mine. That's uh, the owner of the building, Mr. Rizika, and um, Alan Sarlo as well is the other partial owner. And I guess the local newspaper, the Argonaut, went ahead and honored this woman, Tina Marie, uh, in an appropriate manner. Are you a fan of Tina Marie? No, sir, I'm not. I mean, I am as a human being, but I can't say that I have her albums and her records and I got her posters and my, I, I can't say any of that. I did a job, I came to do it and I wanted to do it right. And in the process, doing the research for the actual sketch and doing the research for the presentation itself, I got a chance to plug into her actual life. And while we were painting this thing, her mother actually stepped up and uh, just completely opened up her heart. So I would say musically, I'm not necessarily her fan. I appreciate her music and I appreciate her gifts. Uh, but as a human being, I advocate my sister as well as her family. That's amazing. And, and her mom just came down. Uh, uh, was it planned appointment? Or just showed, she just showed up. No, we were here painting. Uh, Keo and myself got a chance to get Who's this Keo? done. Keo is my partner. His name is Jose Carrillo. He's an original painter uh, with origins right in central Los Angeles area, right by the Panic Zone area, which is the east side of LA from downtown. Um, and we were here painting this in five days as men and with it. discipline and in the process this little old lady came up and out of respect we just kind of nodded and then she just opened up and said that's my daughter that's up there that's her that's my daughter and Keo was the first one to actually speak to her and I told him I said you know what you give her the highest level of respect if we're actually painting her daughter you know what bro you treat her as a as a woman of respect, you treat her as a queen, you give her respect. And in the process, she opened up her her heart and she actually stated, that's her, that's my daughter. She actually said that? That's exactly what she stated. Wow, man. So she was, she was like very excited, right? She was, she's older now. So I believe that she has Alzheimer's, you know, oh, at does? this point, yeah. And in her mind and in her heart, she is referencing Tina Marie as if Tina's still alive. She so is? she told us, she said, I'm going to let Tina know wow. that you painted her. She's on tour around the world. And um, Tina Marie's nephew also was with her. And uh, he pretty much stated, you know what? This is her mom out of respect. Just, I said, oh, no problem. I said, you know what, ma'am? Let Tina know that, that we painted it and gave her a hug. We appreciate you, and it's been an honor to meet you. I'll get you a copy of the actual sketch. It's amazing that the way you, uh, this, you got a real likeness. It's, it's amazing, you got a soul. Well, that's part of forensics, brother. It is? It's forensic studies, you look at a person, you measure. I had to redo her face three times since it was free-handed. Yeah. I just wasn't happy with the first one. People, it looks like her. Second time as well, Tony, uh, I wasn't, I mean, Razika said it looks perfect and it looks good. I just went home. Uh, my precious wife, Rebecca Rios, yes. Becky, um, Lady Bex, uh, she said, you know what, Hector, you got to do what you know is the right thing to do. I said, you know what, baby, I don't feel peace with it. It's not all the way her. I haven't caught her, her essence in her eyes and in, in, in her demeanor. And she said, Hector, do it again. If you have to do it, do it. And that's what I did. The third time I did the measurements while you're up there, it's a huge five foot yeah. face. It doesn't look like it from here, but when you're doing it, it's right up in your face. We can only step back about two and a half, three feet on right. that scaffolding. Um, so it, it, it just was worked and worked until I was able to, you know what, that's her. I can tell, I can feel her essence and, uh, 
and and her look that's her I mean, that's her I, she's going to this uh i put this on the uh the team movie fan pages and okay. the fans are going crazy over this oh okay well I, good i put the second one up there they were made really mad at me because that guy messed up in the first the first mural i see it was all negative man i mean uh, the whole neighborhood hated that hated well it. there were people yelling at us when we were starting to paint this we hate that and i'm like oh my word well we, they hate it yeah. but let's keep going let's keel keep going. and he's like okay you know what let's keep going but uh, there were, I would say, about eight people that drove by that were just, you know, either cussing, uh, using the F word, or we hate that, or it's an eyesore. Yeah, eyesore. But you know what, brother? What I want to say about the first two artists that did this okay. is the fact that I give them respect uh, in the sense that all of us are in the process of, of, of working. Maybe an artist is not... Uh, uh, the most sensational portrait artist, but if you see the rest of the person's works and communications, it could be phenomenal. And not only that, but art is open to interpretation as well. Uh, I just had to approach this pretty much as an architect to be able to get the measurements accurate. Unbelievable. And you, and you were sick for a while. Can you please tell the fans about that? Well, sir, I've been a teacher for 18 years with kids out of all the juvenile halls in Los Angeles. Uh, I was raised as a graffiti writer. I won uh, one of the top placements in the 1984 Olympic Art Contest. And from that point on, I just decided to keep painting, keep painting, studied. Um, I studied several, several courses in, in uh, biblical archaeology and history, uh, different assets and facets of art. But I dedicated myself as a public servant, uh, working with kids out of all the jails in Los Angeles, 12 to 18 years right. old. Uh, at the end Let's of that period, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. You want me over here? <laughs> okay. Go at, ahead. The, at the end of that period, um, pretty much the culmination of all those stresses and being in the trenches with kids that were rapists, murderers, thieves, uh, sons of drug addicts. Um, you know what, it all pretty much took its toll. I ended up with a serious stroke. I was paralyzed half of my body, I would say about five years ago. I was in and out of several hospitals uh, and coming out, I started having a series of, of seizures. They wanted to take away my driver's license and I said, that's it, I'm gonna stop teaching and dedicate myself back to what I did uh, full time and that's painting murals, being right in front of life and color and getting a chance to meet some of the most incredible people that you could imagine in the world in which we live. So that really helped you out a lot. That's what's keeping me out of the hospitals is the fact that I'm still painting. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. Uh, you, you go to school for this? Well, I'll tell you what, I went at 13 years old when I won that contest that I told you about for the Olympics, Otis Parsons and Standard Brand Company actually paid for me to study uh, at Otis Parsons that summer. Victorian buildings, photography, basic illustrations. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I got, along with a guy named Genius from DTK, Maestro, a bunch of uh, writers that were there also. We all met up at Art Center, and again, they offered me several scholarships, but we came from, you know, a family that did not have the highest of dividend and uh, stock market stakes, so we couldn't afford to keep going to these expensive, fancy art schools. What I did is I went hard into the subterranean underground painting. I would get up and paint, do murals, and that's how I developed, and throughout the years, I was able to go ahead and study but I was also able to, to develop myself as a mural artist, first as a graffiti writer, as a graffiti artist, uh, both here and also in sections of New York, but primarily Los Angeles. Was that legal uh, graffiti? No, of course it wasn't. When I started, I was 11, 10, 11, 12 years old, but I was trapped in these huge visions. Uh, you have to understand, um, when you're painting these walls, you know, you, you have to think on a large scale. Yeah. You know, you can't be just stuck to a little watercolor piece of paper or a little school project. But when I was 10 years old, I would get these huge visions and I would go out, figure out ways to paint, whether there were factories on, on the railroad tracks or at schools or wherever I could put up a message that was positive against uh, drugs or child abuse or against a number of issues, you know, that, that I would stand for. But I would paint these huge 
uh, these huge massive scaled murals in color, mostly in spray paint. What's the biggest money you have painted? Boy, I would say about 600 feet in the city of Burbank for a company called New Hero. Uh, Michael Gold was the owner of the company and that was also highly publicized on the very last day of painting this huge wraparound 600 foot environmental mural uh, that had very clear messages against the clear cut of trees that was happening in Brazil and then also the honor of all of the earth animals from different habitats and environments on the very last day it was completely um, destroyed. It was? Oh, oh yeah, a couple guys went over, painted over the entire thing so to me, seeing that's that that's that's huge that's amount of work uh, that took pretty much an extensive period of time, months and months and months to do, seeing it destroyed in that manner, it was either that I was going to go into a, a, you know, an anger cave mode yeah. or a retaliatory mentality, or I was going to have the the inner fortitude to get up and get that thing painted again and that's exactly what we did i used the colors that were used against me inside of the mural itself yeah and it was way better the second time around after it had been maliciously defaced uh than the first time when i had actually gotten the write-off and, and the finishing of it and the second time around, it was actually published in several books wow. in the state of California as well, you know, uh, international mural books. How long did it last, that mural? You know, it's still pretty much up in those areas. I just haven't been there for maybe, I would say, 18 years. It's a long time. Yes, sir. This uh, mural right here will be here forever. It's, the, uh, it's, it's amazing. Well, you know what, sir? It's here now. Yeah. And this is a time for all of her fans and everyone that goes by here to appreciate it. But the word forever I got you. is an extensive, yeah. extensive idea. You got to live day by day, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. You can have dreams, but you know what, brother? You appreciate the time. Yeah. And the, You're right. you can, yeah, you the things you have now. Exactly. Have you ever done a New York City uh, subway car? You know what, brother? I'm part of, of, of several organizations of people that grew up out of the New York subways. I painted several freight trains wow. and handball courts as a kid growing up. And with my art classes that I taught, the Alternatives program, you could view it at alternatives.org. Um, working with these kids, mainly all kinds of ex-taggers, kids that belong to the to the court system, ward of the court kids uh, that are now in rehabilitation centers, or we get them right out of all the juvenile halls, and the majority of them. That's how they communicated, going out, painting, you know, putting up an identity. A lot of times territorial uh, uh, animosities yeah. and territorial uh, dissensions and, and killings. So what I do is I work with those kids. They understand the fundamentals of taking a spray can and putting something up. But hey, man, you could do something way beyond that. You can use colors. You could understand colors. You could read every day. You could you could understand uh, territory territories that are outside and beyond your neighborhood. You know, think of of what, how people live in China. Think of how people live in Timbuktu, Zimbabwe, uh, Palestine, Israel. Think of areas that you've never visited before. Study it. Look at the habitat. Look at the animals, the entomological uh, embodiments, the insects that, that are, are within those regions. Look at how they have color within themselves. Uh, study camouflage. Uh, study the way they cohabitate with one another. Study the foods, the music, the culture, and then be able to think outside of your LA killing neighborhood where you get up and do your tags and think on an international scale and you'll be able to do incredible works. You must be a big, a big hero to all these people. I'm sorry? You must be a big hero to all these kids. You know what, brother? I'm, I'm a servant. Yeah. That's what I am. I care about them. I don't judge them. I don't look down on them. The only time you look down on someone, you know this, Tony, is when you're helping them back up. Yeah. That's the only time you look down on someone. I got you. And uh, what's your Facebook? It's Hector. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you both. Okay. There's a graffiti a aspect of Facebook. It's Hector Hex Rios uh, at Facebook, or there's the alternatives C Y D P. It's a A R T E R N A T I V E S. 
CYDP, Creative Youth Diversion Programs, on Facebook, or you can look it up online. I do want to say something before we go. Sure. I know it's raining, uh, but I want to say how much I appreciate uh, my partner, Keel. for all of his heart, his hard work, getting up, his discipline, getting up on those crazy, especially over on these sides, when we're painting over here, Tony. Yeah. On those sides, we had to hang I'm on kidding. the scaffold. Here, uh, Eider, uh, this gentleman that's an RA, his name is Eider. Yeah. Tall, big, white guy, uh, huge heart. He's also a graffiti writer. Went up and actually constructed that guitar edge. We gave him the plans, he did it put it together and he went up and hung on the side of the scaffold to be able to drill yeah. that thing. You can see it from the back side. You can see the, the plate that he put in. That was no joke. And I do want to say this, Tony. I want to say that I have the highest respect for Keo, for Eider, and for all those that are supporting this project. And it's one of many that are to come. God bless you. And when your phone number, please, sir. 213-435-9611. And I better not get any Darth Vader huffing and puffing, Tony. You respect the phone number. Well, you're a great guy. <laughs> like that. The fans want to thank you. you. You did a beautiful job. Yeah. I want to thank you. I want to thank God. I want to thank Solo. I want to thank the pain Yes, for sir. It. Great gentleman. You know, great and, gentleman. Uh, thank you again. Praise God.